I talked with younger players today uh, just about breathing and supporting a little bit, and I'll just give you the same speech because I'm watching some of you, some of you win players, the French one players, and kind of, we're kind of just like, <laughs> you know, and what we need to do is whenever we breathe uh, on any of our wind instruments, the, the inhalation is just as important as what we do after that. So we need to take a nice relaxed breath using an open syllable and like, and O, the letter O, is if you think about it, you go, and feel how nice and relaxed the air goes into your lungs. That's what we want to do. I'm watching some of you, and some of you are kind of like this, you know, <laughs> you know and you're, we have to, this, uh, even though it doesn't take a lot of air to play this, it does take control there, and it takes air support. So, uh, that's kind of half, that, like you're yawning, like, that feeling when you yawn, when you breathe in, that's how it should feel. And then we have a fighting chance of having a relaxed sound when we play, as opposed to not taking an effort, in an effort, or taking in a, a, a tense breath. Like, anybody get nervous when they play? You know, like, you get nervous, you start going, you start breathing like that, and then your sound gets tense and stuff. Those are a couple of things uh, that will help with that, the inhalation. That's somebody told me that years ago, and my, instantly my tone improved, because now, Air going in relaxed, it will come out relaxed as well. If that makes any question, that makes any sense. Um, I, I notice how we start you off warming up every day with some long tones, right? What I might suggest is have them, when they do those things, have them play it mezzo forte like you did, and then have them all play it pianissimo, the same thing, to make sure uh, the first response of the day can be made at the softest possible volume. It's like if it's I picked up my horn and I practiced every day and I just went, my first notes were always. You know, I was playing like fortissimo, you know what I mean? I'm training myself to only play fortissimo. And then if somebody asks me to play something soft, I go, oh, I got problems, right? So uh, that's something I just might suggest. Have them play a comfortable volume to get the juices flowing and then have them play as soft as they can play, you know. Whatever that little thing was you guys were playing, I don't know if it was chromatic or diatonic, but anyway, like that to make sure everybody, because that's, if you figure, that's the foundation of where we play on any instrument, whether it's a drum, or a French horn, or a piano, how elegantly can we come in? How soft can we play? It's easy to play loud, you know. If you airball a note, right? Well, I can easily fix that by just blowing harder, right? But so why why am I trumpet players? Why am I airballing that note? What ha what is this? Why is that happening? Anybody? Your lips aren't vibrating. They're vibrating because I'm They're making vibrating. a sound. I got nothing. But <laughs> well, I drew this picture for them <clears throat> earlier. So these are lips, believe it or not. <laughs> and when we play pianissimo, the size of that space, the aperture, like the space between the reed and the saxophone, and, you know, th that space, the softer we play, the smaller that has to be, right? So if we're playing fortissimo, this is what happens. That all starts vibrating, right? So we're playing fortissimo. So I got this giant space, right? Now, if I don't move enough air between that giant space, see how far I had to go for sound? So when, we, when that happens to any of us, on the saxophone even, we have to make the reed go closer to the top of the mouthpiece when we play softer, right? So that has to become smaller or larger depending on the volume we're gonna play. And we're gonna play soft. There's a little pinhole here, right? Now if I try to play loud and not let that change, as hard as I can right now, and I'm not getting any louder. All this is doing is backing up on me, and the sound's getting funny, right? So that's a really important part of the mechanism. And in all the brass books that we probably study out of and look, uh, look into, they don't even mention the aperture. Like the, the trumpet plays, you have an Arbin's book, any of you? 
that's kind of the trumpet player's Bible, they call it. You know, the, what is it, the clarinet book called the Clove or something, clarinet book that's like, a lot of people used to play it. There's these there's certain books or certain instruments that are like the, the Holy Grail, right? For the trumpets, it's the Arvin's book. That book was written in the late 1800s, right? So I'd like to think we've learned a couple of things since then, even though there's some really great information in there. They, they don't even mention this, the aperture, which if you think about it on any of your uh, reed instruments, what's the most important part of the, the instrument for making sound? The reed. The reed. If the reed sucks, you're dead in the water, right? It's hard to make a sound, it's hard to play soft, it's hard to, you know, you, you, you'll squeak on the clarinet if the reed's not right. So we have to condition our reeds and understand how they, how they function. And uh, trumpet players generally don't know how this functions. So when we're airballing a note, it's usually because this is too big. So if you think about that, when you play, so I'll try to come down like a, a pinhole. constant air moving, and it'll help you control your volume. And we'll also, on any, any wind instrument, the softer we can play to, to start, it's easy to play loud, but getting that foundation set, then you have a solid foundation to do the other things you're gonna do above that, right? Um, not this band, but a lot of younger players especially, they just take the trumpet out of the case and they just play as loud as they can, and then they play and they're reinforcing this bad habit every day. So it's really important whether you play the drums or whatever, how to hit how to hit the instrument lightly, like you know, like doing snare drum movements, whatever you, you guys do over there, I don't know. But you know, but you're getting that control and then being able to bring it up in volume and keeping that same control and getting to where you can get that volume with half the effort. So it becomes technique instead of brute force. <laughs> you know, on the trumpet, brute force is like we blow as hard as we can on the French horn, you know. And that drums, we hit the drum as hard as we can, or we pluck the bass as hard as we can. But if you watch really great musicians, classical musicians, or violinists, or bass players, you see the bass section going dum, 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 and they're barely doing anything, and you hear all the sound coming out, right? So quality of sound.